Hello, in this video we're going to go over problem N3 from IMO 2022. Let A greater than 1 be a positive integer and D greater than 1 be a positive integer co prime to A. Let X1 equals 1 and K greater than or equal to 1. Define the sequence recursively. XK plus 1 is equal to XK plus D if A doesn't divide XK and XK over D if A divides XK. Now we want to find the largest positive integer n for which there exists an index k such that xk is divisible by a to the power of n. At this point you may want to pause the video and think about this problem and then come back and see how I go over the solution. I'm going to walk you through the thought process behind getting to a solution. So the first thing that I did when I saw this problem was I uh, evaluated this sequence for different values. So for example, if you plug in a equals 5, d equals 3, you would get the sequence 1 and then add 3 to 1, we get 4, add 3 to that, we get 7, add 3 to that, we get 10, divide by 5, we get 2, add 3, we get 5, divide by 5, we get 1. So the answer is 1. Then I tried a equals 7, d equals 2, and I ended up with 1, and then 3, and then 5, and then 7, and eventually 1. So I tried a couple more examples, and every single time I got 1. But at some point I realized that every single example that I did, in fact, a was more than d. So I thought, okay, can I solve the problem when d is less than a and I show that the answer is in fact 1. In other words, a divides one of the terms but a squared divides none of the terms. And that was not very difficult to prove. So here's how I did that. So if you start from 1 and then add d to that and then add 2d to that, you'll have to continue doing that until you get to a multiple of a. Now, one thing that is fairly clear and not difficult to prove is that if you have a complete residue system and multiply the complete residue system by a relatively prime number to the mod and then translate it by some number you would get a complete residue system. In other words among all of these you will have all of the remainders mod A. Why is that so? Because none of these are going to be the same. So if 1 plus KD is the same as 1 plus LD mod A. That tells us A divides K minus LD, but A and D are relatively prime, so that means A divides K minus L. However, K and L are between 0 and A, which means that tells us that K and L must be the same. So in other words, these are all distinct mod A. But we have A of them, which means one of them is going to be divisible by A. So let's just say 1 plus KD is divisible by A. So the next term would have to be divided by A. So we'll have to take that and divide that by A. So now you get one of the terms is going to be this. Now if you look at the quantity 1 plus KD, this is less than or equal to 1 plus A minus 1D. Now, we know that this is less than a squared because d is less than a. So this is the case when d is less than a. Now, in other words, if I look at 1 plus kd divided by a, I would get something less than a. So what does that mean? It means you start from 1 and you end up getting two things that do not exceed a squared and eventually back to something less than a. Now if you start from this, and I call this one xn, I will take this xn and then I add d, I add 2d, etc. At some point I will get xn plus kd which is a multiple of a and then divide that by a. So if I look at this, this is less than xn is less than a, k is also less than a, d is less than a minus 1, that's not equal to a minus 1 and then divided by a. So this is less than a again. So all of the terms are less than a squared. Every term is less than a squared and one term 
is divisible by a what does that mean it means the answer is 1 when d is less than a okay so this was the case when d is less than a what if d is greater than a then i wrote down a, a few examples and i realized that it depends on how large d is so if d is less than a squared then i end up getting two if you look at some examples which is what i did you'll end up getting two so let's see how we can actually prove this one or see if it is true or not and in that case i saw that uh, something similar to before happens except that the number would be two and you end up getting a squared and then you go to a and then you go to one so what i realized was that when i look at the sequence it would start with one and then one plus d and then you get to one plus kd and then divide by a and then you add again ld and then you divide a by a etc so the reason is very similar to the discussion that we had before if you get to xn xn plus d all the way to xn plus a minus 1d all of these are distinct mod a they are a different numbers mod a so there is some k between 0 and a minus 1 such that xn plus kd is in fact divisible by a and that would give you the next term that is going to be divided by a it could be xn itself but it could also be something in the later terms of the sequence but nothing after that so then I thought, okay, is it possible for me to show that in this sequence there is an x a, a squared? So I looked at 1 plus kd divided by a plus ld. I was hoping that this could be equal to a squared. If you cross multiply, you will get k plus lad equals a cubed. For this to happen, d must divide a cubed minus 1, and this does not necessarily happen but I do know that a to some power is 1 mod d because a and d are relatively prime so in fact we know that a to the power of phi of d is 1 mod d so there is some integer that when you raise a to that power you get 1 mod d and that should be our enough for us to solve the problem so let's see if we get 1 plus k d let's call it k 1 d over a plus k2d over a plus k3d etc over a plus etc plus kmd I want this to be equal to a squared so if I take the common denominators I would get 1 plus k1d plus a k2d plus a to the power of m minus 1 kmd is equal to a to the power of m plus 1 if you factor d you will get this times d is a to the power of m plus 1 minus 1 now notice that this guy is an integer between 0 and a to the power of m so this is basically writing down a to, uh, writing down any integer in base uh, a so that how you would write it down because all of the kj's are between 0 and a minus 1 inclusive so now I know that this guy is divisible by d for some m so there is some m for example phi of d minus 1 could be m such that d divides a to the power of m plus 1 minus 1 so this means a to the power of m plus 1 minus 1 over d is an integer now if you look at this quantity a to the power of m plus 1 minus 1 over d this is between a to the power of m plus 1 over a squared and less than a to the power of m plus 1 over a because d is between a and a squared this is a to the power of m so what does that mean it means this quantity can be written as a sum of k1 plus a k2 all the way to a to the power of m minus 1 kn because of that a squared appears in that sequence now in general we could do something very similar 
So let's suppose d is between a to the power of n minus 1 and a to the power of n. We claim a to the power of n divides xk for some k and a to the power of n plus 1 does not divide xk for every k. Okay, so first the claim that a to the power of n plus 1 doesn't divide xk. That can be shown by showing that xk is always less than n to, uh, a to the power of n plus 1. And we do that by a very similar method. So if you have some xm that is less than a to the power of n, so then what you do is you take xm plus kd at some point for some k less than or equal to a minus 1 and greater than or equal to 0, this would be divisible by, uh, divisible by a. But this quantity is less than a to the power of n plus a minus 1 times d. d is less than a to the power of n. So this would become a to the power of n plus 1. So what does that mean? It means every term between this term and the next term that is going to be divided by a is going to be less than a to the power of n plus 1. Now at that point, we'll divide by a, which would become less than a to the power of n. And then from here, we go back to right here. And then just repeating the same process, every term in the sequence would be less than a to the power of n plus 1. Now we will have to show that there is some term that gives us a to the power of n. Okay, so how do we do that? We will show that for some sequence of k's, this quantity, k1d over a plus etc., let's say kmd equals a to the power of, so I would need, uh, I would need to get a to the power of n. So I would like this to be a to the power of n. So this is true if and only if 1 plus k0 plus k1a, the process is quite the same, km a to the power of m times d equals a to the power of n plus m. So we are going to subtract 1 divided by d. We get k0 plus k1a plus km a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n plus m minus 1 divided by d. Now we can find an, an exponent that this is an integer. So we will do that. And then um, if you look at the a to the power of n plus 1 minus 1 over d, this is of course an integer and it's less than, the numerator is less than n to power, a to the power of n plus m and the denominator is more than a to the power of n minus 1. And this is a to the power of m plus 1. So this quantity is every integer between 0 and a to the power of m plus 1 can be written in this form, which means we will be able to obtain this guy in this form, which means we will be able to obtain a to the power of n in the sequence, which means we will be able to obtain 1. Because when we get to a to the power of n, we will just keep dividing by a, until we get to 1. So then the answer is n if a to the power of n minus 1 is less than d, less than a to the power of n. So this is the answer. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to check out the rest of the videos on my channel, and I will see you in the next video.